guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Store, broker owner of Stort Real Estate. Happy Friday. I hope you had an awesome week. Hope you have many fun, amazing plans for this weekend. The sun is shining bright. It's an awesome day today. And I just wanted to bring a quick message to my renters out there. If you have not purchased a house yet, check this out. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to me, 240-472-7453. If you guys like this video, make sure you click that like button. Subscribe to this channel so you can get all the new videos as they're released. But check this out. Today's video is called Be the Lord of Your Land. So as we're getting into it, there's a couple different things I want you to think about and focus points I want you to focus on as we're going through it. Number one, it costs less to pay mortgage than it does to pay rent. Number two, after paying 30 years of mortgage, there is no more mortgage payment. And number three, only you should set your standard of living. So once again, guys, today's video is called Be the Lord of Your Land. Today's question is, how much does your landlord make from you each year? So I just drew this little example for you guys to kind of see the reference point and where I'm going for with this video today. So let's just say you're paying a rent of $1,500 per month. Some of you guys might be paying a little bit more than that. Some of you guys, hopefully, if you're renting, are paying less than that. But let's just say your rent is $1,500 a month, okay? So 12 months of that, and it truly ends up being $18,000. So if you pay $1,500 a month renting for a whole year lease, you would have then paid your landlord $18,000, If you happen to do that for five years, because that $18,000, multiply that by renewing your lease five times, hopefully the rent has not increased. Let's just say it remained at that $1,500 each lease renewal or, or for the duration of that five years, that actually ends up being $90,000. You've given your landlord $100,000 just by occupying his place for five years or her place for five years. If you actually were there for 10 years, because of course, right now we're in 2020, this is the start of a new decade and I wanna make sure everybody starts their decade off right. So if you were in 2010 renting for $1,500, now you're in January 2020. If you still happen to be renting for that $1,500 and it has not increased and the whole time you've actually been renting, you would have paid your landlord $180,000. It's 200 racks. She gave your landlord $200,000. You know what your landlord's doing with that money? Keep in mind, it costs less to pay mortgage than it does to pay rent. So your landlord might have a mortgage out against the property. And this $1,500 is going towards paying that mortgage. This $1,500 is going towards paying their property taxes. This $1,500 is going towards paying their homeowner's insurance. And you also know what it's doing? It's actually paying for their lifestyle. So they might be using it to pay the mortgage of their principal residence. They might be using it to drive whichever vehicle that they choose to. They might be using it to pay for first class plane tickets. But renting always will be more costly than paying a mortgage on the same exact comparable property. So if you get tired of renting, which I suggest that you do, and you decide that you wanna buy something, there's hope. It's very, very easy. Here's a couple quick things to keep in mind that you should be doing as you are looking to purchase. There's a couple different things that you need to have. One is a source of funds. You need to figure out how are you actually paying for this property that you're going to be acquiring. Are you going to be paying for this property with cash? It might be so. Are you going to be using some savings that you have in the bank account, maybe some investments that you might have? Are you going to be taking some money, whether you're liquidating or you're borrowing against your 401k? Are you going to need to get a bank loan? 
Do you not have enough cash to bridge the difference? That's perfectly okay. There are many great lenders out there, which I could introduce you to, that can help you come up with really good loan programs that are very advantageous. So if you're going to get a bank loan, it's a very, very common option, and most people actually do. So banks require a couple different things if they're going to actually let you borrow money. So if they're going to trust you to borrow a couple hundred thousand dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, depending on where you're purchasing, they're going to need to make sure that you can actually afford to pay them back each month. They're going to want you to have an actual source of income. Do you have a job? If you do, then you're going to have to supply a paycheck and or W-2s showing how much you actually make from that job. If you don't have a job and you're an entrepreneur, you might be a real estate agent, you might be a business owner, you might own Starbucks, McDonald's, whatever, you don't have a job, you create jobs and you help the economy, then you don't necessarily need to provide a paycheck, you're going to just need to give a couple years of your taxes. So they're going to want to see your returns, how much you're making per X amount of years, and they might take an average of that to have your qualification number. If you don't have either one and you might be looking for a job, let's just say you're a college student and you just graduated. That's fine also because a lot of times, depending on your case, of course, an offer letter for a new job that you're just securing, outlining how much you're going to be making per year and per month will be sufficient. And the lender can base your qualification of purchasing off of a potential that's guaranteed in writing to make X amount or Y amount. And if you don't want to deal with any of that, and you just don't want to deal with the headache of showing income, there are a lot of great lenders out there that all you have to do is put 20% to 30% of the sales price as a down payment, and they don't need an income verification. They don't need to see where you work. They don't care where you work. You have enough skin in the game where they know that you're not going to foreclose on that property. You're going to continue paying for it. So if you're also getting a bank loan, they're going to want to see your credit score. Your credit score is just a reflection of how often you pay your bills on time, how much debts and leverages you have against your name. So they're going to want to make sure that you're a great candidate. You'll repay them also. Your credit is also going to be reflecting how much debt you have versus how much money you make. They call that the debt to income ratio. So they want to make sure that the amounts of total debts that you have, when you might add up your car note, your student loans, any credit cards you might have, any personal loans you might have, they're going to add up all of that. They're going to come up with your minimum monthly payment on all those credit items. And then they're going to look at how much you're actually bringing in per month. And they don't want to see all of, they don't want to see all of those credit items plus the mortgage that they're giving you exceed a certain number. Of course, there are many different back ends depending on the loan program that you get. So I don't want to freak you out. I don't want to quote an exact number. But if you're interested in that, reach out to me at 240-472-7453. I'll introduce you to a great lender and they will be able to help you understand your specific credit profile. But keep in mind, no matter what situation you're doing, whether you're putting a 0% down on a loan, whether you're putting 1% down on a loan, whether you're putting 5% down on a loan, if you happen to put 20 or 30% down on a loan, the higher the down payment, the easier it is to do your loan and the cheaper it's going to be per month for you to be able to repay your loan. So... Once again, I highly suggest that everybody become the lord of your own land. Stop putting money in your landlord's pockets and make sure you start putting that money into your own pockets. After you pay rents for 30 years, you still have a rent payment the 31st year. After you've paid mortgage for 30 years, if you haven't refinanced the loan and you took a 30-year loan, you have no more mortgage payment. So I want to see you guys in 2050 not have any mortgage payments. That's how far we're looking forward to this. Right now, it's 2020. 30 years from now, you should not have a housing payment, okay? So if you want to get your housing situation right and your money right, make sure you give me a call, 240-472-7453. It's time for you to become the lord of your land.